Mega one and everyone and welcome, welcome back to some more Misty Mountain. My name is Melville and Uy Callen and we are going to fight the battle at Karas Galathon. Just jump straight into that. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one, to say the least, because I am not a hundred percent on getting all of my orcs into battle, though I should be able to. I know that I should be able to, but we shall see, we shall see. It depends on the game. In any case, it is morning here, so my voice be slightly, uh, or sound a slightly bit stranger than it normally does. I've just woken up and have decided to record this one right away so I can do whatever I want for the rest of the day and not have to care about things. So, what we have? We have a good forest. That's good, because that means that ballistae and archers are not going to be that effective. Now, I believe they are both going to be coming in from this side over here, so it's better if we go backwards and just try to find some kind of a defensive position. And I guess this is a alright position right there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everyone, position them along the line here, and then I'm going to position them better once we start the battle. And it does appear, indeed, as if we were not going to re get reinforcements ye yet. Now, I keep claiming that I have a good computer, don't I? But then again, you can't see getting reinforcements. Eh. Well, you can make of that what you wish, but I think it is quite alright. Can run the newer Total War games without so many problems, anyway. So, hmm. I don't know, I don't know. But, anyways, uh, we are just going to set up in some type of a defensive formation. Praise Eru or Melkor, maybe Morgoth, I mean, for the trees, because they're going to provide we, us with cover. And, uh, yeah, we're basically just going to wait for the Elven host to arrive upon us. And we're basically just going to hope that we can stand our ground for long enough so that reinforcements may reach us and we're going to be all right because we should outnumber them quite substantially and the thing about elves is that if you manage to outnumber them incredibly much you can probably stun lock them and win that way though it's it's not going to be easy an easy battle it's going to take very many losses from our orc people and yeah it's going to be a hard fought battle and that's the, the 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 least one can say about it and here they come immediately and you should run to your position so you are in position when they arrive that would be very helpful thank you very much Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, I can tell you that I have not yet given any thought as to when I'm going to record the next changelog video. It is likely not going to be done this week because I'm going to have to study for a uh, summer test, which I have on Friday actually. So I'm not going to have too much time to put into um, Recording, spending like five, six, seven hours a day to read up a little bit about the changes and record the things and edit it. That's, and I do like to do it all in one go because it's more like you remember what you said in your previous snippet of the episode and you can more easily combine them and move forward that way. And uh, I therefore don't really like recording one episode a day uh, or one snippet a day or a few snippets a day and then move over to the next day and record a few more because it, I get some some kind of a disconnect there with my with my snippets and it's it gets very hard to 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 weave them together I think and therefore I don't think I can put aside that much time a day for 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 the change log this week so it's probably going to come out I'm not gonna promise and don't get married to the idea but potentially next week or the week after that depending on 
tentative dates. I should still have the next week off. And after that week, I should actually start working. And then I'm going to be out in the archipelago and not really have access to this computer. So I'm not going to be able to record stuff. And whenever I'm thinking, like, I usually think that maybe I should record two episodes today because then I can get the... Um, for instance, when I record on Monday, I'm thinking maybe I should record Thursday's episode now, today, so that I get Wednesday off and not have to worry about it anymore for this week. And I almost every single Monday think that, that I'm going to record the next episode now at the same time. <laughs> that, that's been the pattern for a few weeks now. I'm going to record two episodes on Monday, so I get Wednesday off. Have I ever done it? No, I have not. Because whenever you finish with this uh, episode, it's like, okay, I finished it. Now let's take a little bit of a break so I can catch my breath and maybe not have to talk for that long in a continuous strip and try to be entertaining. And uh, nothing more with that other than it, it really means that uh, I had a point with this... Uh, it means that basically I do not like recording more than one video a day. That's basically what it boils down to. Which in turn means that I do not know how likely it is I'm going to be pre-recording the um, the, thing, uh, the videos for when I'm not at home, but out in the archipelago. And that's going to be a two-week strip and uh, it will be after... Not next week, but the weeks after that, two weeks there, I'm not going to have access to computer. And then I'm going to have one week off in which I should have access to computer. And then two weeks again where I don't have access to it. And then two weeks when I do have access. And then three weeks when I don't have access again. So that's my basically summer holiday. But in any case, um, at a point. Yes. <coughs> I have been doing it with... <coughs> do, excuse me. <coughs> Apologies for that. But I have been toying with the idea of maybe recording an episode a day, as in recording one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday. And then just put them up during the time when I'm not at home. So that you would get a your two <coughs> your two episodes a week. You would of course not get a change log video when I'm not at home. Um, goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. So, I don't know. Oh, they got a ballista now. That's unfortunate. Um, what can I spare? I can spare you two. One there. So, yeah, I'm, I've been toying with that idea, and I think that may be what I do. Because I don't want you to be without, be without videos for too long, but I also don't really fancy recording too many videos a day. So what I think I am going to do is indeed I'm going to try to give you your two episodes a week. I'm not going to promise I'm going to be able to make it, because I might only be able to get you three out of four of those videos or something like that, but... If at all possible, I will strive for for four videos. So yeah, that's what I'm going to strive for. <coughs> Hopefully, it will succeed as well. So yeah, um, I will have more information for you next week probably because this week is going to be a little bit less uh, game heavy, I presume, because I need to actually study something. And it's like, yeah, okay, you've already got into your summer holiday habits and you're not really up for doing school work and um, now you need to get back into it for one week to read for one test and let's just say it's not it's not the one the thing I fancy the most <laughs> but I'm gonna try to do it and they've actually got reinforcements so it should probably not be this far out uh, you've actually hit the ballet style so, you actually go back here now. As should you do. 
I'm not paying any attention to this battle, by the way, if you hadn't already guessed. They are reloading and those goblin bands can chase them, that's fine. You should not be chasing, but they should instead be returning here. Use them there. Something like that. I do hate trees on battle maps because it is so annoying to try and find your troops. Especially when they're grey like that and grey brownish like mine. So annoying to find your troops from within the trees that it's, it's not even funny. And you should run back to your designated positions. Yes, get moving. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. All right. You might not be able to kill the Lorian archers, but you may be able to. So we shall see what happens, basically. Maybe that helps. I'm not sure. That did help, actually, because now defeat is a certainty. The trick about the Misty Mountains, then, if you hadn't already guessed. Use your numbers. Without your numbers, you're nothing. But with your numbers, you can even take down some elves. Even if they are shooting. But they may be shooting more of their own troops in the back. I don't know. Uh, yesterday we had a birthday party, actually. And uh, got a little bit late, so I'm a little bit tired. You may be able to notice I'm not my... Uh, I'm not as energetic as I may normally be. I don't know, you might not be able to notice. I might be able to fake that quite well. In any case, uh, we played, during the party, we played a few party games, like Jackbox Party Pack. It's terribly good fun, that game is, and I love it. It's, it's really, really good. If you've ever played it, especially from the third pack, there's a game called Trivia Murder Party. And if you ever tried that one, you and you like it, you, I think you, you'll understand what I mean. I think it's hilarious the whole game, and it's it's really good fun to play with with friends alongside when you're sitting on a couch, and just play from a uh, from your smartphones and look at your TV screen. We also played Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes on, with three people. And uh, that was a very interesting experience, shall we say, especially when we ha when we had had a few drinks to drink and um, were a little bit tipsy. It was also almost in the middle of the night, like 11 o'clock, 23 or something. And uh, <coughs> we actually did quite all right, surprisingly. We got past all the, the first level bombs and all the second level bombs and it's <laughs> it's terribly good fun actually because it's it's yeah it's it's very much fun to see if you can manage to defuse a bomb. If you don't know what this game is, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. The game is basically that you need at least two people. You can be more than two people. Where one people is the designated defuser and will be sitting by the computer. Uh, he or she is the only person allowed to look at the computer screen. The other people will have either on a tablet or printed out version of a PDF of a diffusion manual. And they are not allowed to look at the screen and the diffuser is not allowed to look at the manual. And the diffuser's uh, task is to listen to what the diffuser says is on the bomb there are a few compartments like for instance there are wires there are symbols there are buttons and so on so it's up to the diffuser to describe what compartments are on the bomb and then it's up to the the experts basically to go through the pdf file and try to find the corresponding instructions for how to disarm that module and for instance how to disarm a uh, wires basically there depending on how many wires there are in the module and depending on what color those wires are the diffusers or no sorry the experts will give different directions to the diffuser who will then cut the, the correct wire and diffuse that compartment if you do wrong three times the bomb explodes and you're dead and you also have a timer so it's really really stressful but it's really good fun if you because it's really relies on you being able to communicate 
and uh, it's it's really good fun because you need to be able to actually describe what's on the bomb. You need to understand what the expert is, the experts are saying, and the experts need to be able to understand what the diffuser is saying on are uh, on the bomb is on the bomb, and that is far from easy. It sounds much easier than it actually is. Oh, it's terribly good fun. Especially, there's one compartment which is really, really annoying. And uh, what it is, is basically... Uh, it has a display at the top, and then there are six, six buttons, basically, below it. And these buttons have different names on them. And uh, the diffuser is the only one who gets to see this, and it's up to the diffuser to say what's in the display. And then it's up to the experts to say which one of the buttons is, uh, the person is supposed to look from in order to, and then read back that word to the experts so they can uh, determine which button the, ex the diffuser is supposed to press to diffuse that compartment, if that makes any sense. The point with that is basically that the compartment or the names and labels of those buttons are really confusing. They are like, uh, you can have a blank place, and that means there's nothing in the screen, but it can also say blank. Uh, it can be you are, concatenated and non-concatenated, it can be your, your, and so on. So it's really <laughs> confusing when you're trying to explain that, no, it's you are, but with an apostrophe, or it's you are, but not concatenated, or not with an apostrophe, or it's your, it's yours, it's it's you own it, or something like that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hilariously difficult. There's words like okay, first, left, right, just to confuse the hell out of you. <laughs> We did have an edge, however, because we were able to translate into other languages and uh, cheat that, well, not cheat, and communicate that way, but because it's much easier to use um, a different language to represent your, as in, it is you, or it is yours, and uh, express you are, and concatenate it and say that in a different language, it's just it gives you an edge, basically, because you can translate it, and you can use that other language to translate your into sinun or din, and uh, use that and make people understand it that way. <laughs> it's, it's just terribly confusing. It's really good fun, though. The game costs a little bit. It's on a Steam, and it's, it's a really good party game, especially if you've had a little bit of a drink. And the bombs do get worse, of course. <laughs> But that's, that's really good fun. Uh, and then, for some reason, after that, after we had played that, we I still stayed up for roughly two and a half more hours. And uh, when I finally got to bed, it was like three in the morning or something like that. And as everyone knows, well, not as everyone knows, but, I mean, everybody likes to stay up late at night sitting with a hexographer program open and assign your own world in Dungeons and Dragons, don't they? Because that's what I did. I literally sat by my computer, I had a friend with me actually, and uh, we were we were both a little bit tipsy and we were like, yeah, okay, let's launch up hexographer, which is a map creation program basically, in which you can create your own fantasy maps or space maps or modern maps, whatever you fancy really strong program it's a pain to use because it's written java and doesn't work in any way shape and or form really powerful however and really good annoying to use but good and uh yeah we basically sat up for two and a half hours just just looking at the map and being like okay so in this region here there will be elves living here there are dwarves living here there are humans living and so on and we gave them all names and uh, named the cities, named the, uh, the seas, we didn't actually name a sea, named forests and so on. Terribly good fun actually when you're a little bit tipsy in, on a Sunday evening or Monday morning depending on what your preference is. <laughs> and it's, yeah. 
nice. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it was a really interesting thing because everything is better with a little bit of a drink, isn't it? No, that's not true. But I personally enjoy playing Dwarf Fortress, if you know what that is. I have a few videos actually of, of Dwarf Fortress on my channel if you don't know what it is and you need a quick tour. But anyways, I like playing Dwarf Fortress with a little bit of a drink with me. For example, if you take one whiskey or two whiskeys and then you're like, okay, let's play Dwarf Fortress. Let's go for it. And I can't explain how that feels, but it is a blast. At least I think so. Of course, you need to be able to play the game first, but and if you jump into it whilst a little bit drunk, it's not going to work out very, very well at all. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I mean, it's. <laughs> I find it hilarious to be like, oh no, that wolf died, or no, that that cat died because it licked licked its fur, and the fur was drenched in alcohol because the cat walked over an alcoholic floor or a floor with which had spilled alcohol on it, so the cat actually died of alcohol poisoning, and that is actually a thing that happens in that game. I'm not even kidding. You can literally get a message saying that a cat has died of alcohol poisoning because it's cleaned its fur after walking in an alcoholic puddle which lay on the floor because dwarves spill alcohol. Dwarves on the also do not like drinking water except when they're sick for some reason. They do not drink water otherwise. They don't bathe either. Uh, but I'm not joking about that cat. It's ridiculous. And... I find it hilarious to play whilst a little bit tipsy, but I mean, you can't jump into it and start playing tipsy. You need to be able to know how to play it first. <laughs> I don't know why I walked into that, but that was, I just find that like a hilarious thing. Just funny things you do whilst a little bit tipsy, and you know, I do weird things. What else can I tell you then? Um, oh, I don't know. I actually don't know. This battle, we've lost 57%, which is to be expected. Though we've only used one of our army. We've killed three generals. I don't know how they've had three generals. I think we killed three generals. Three generals. I thought they only had two. Oh, no, they could have had three, of course. Yeah, yeah, I think actually they had four. Now that I think about it. Anyways, we've only used one banner army, however, so that 57% is only from one banner army. That must be the last general must to hit. Probably. In any case, we've not lost... <coughs> we've really not lost much to the Lorian Elves. And I think that is really good. Really, really good. Um, yeah, we're gonna finish it. We're never gonna catch up to the elves. So we lost. We healed 10%. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And we have one unscathed army as well. I really didn't like. Do not like when the army numbers are like this. Like you have 2,426. That's such a random number, isn't it? I much prefer it if you have a zero at the end, because that that means it's nice. It's a nice even number. That's an even number, but nevertheless, I do like that. I I, I don't know why, but I do. Okay, uh, so they lost basically all of the troops. What killed the most? Uh, casualties inflicted goes to goblin archers. Actually, yeah, goblin archers across the board with mountain oak hunters being a second. Actually, yeah. So, Misty Mountain Orcs can defeat Lothlorien, but you just need a bunch more troops than the Lothlorien has. Than Lothlorien has. Hello, Sauron. So, yeah. That means that Lothlorien is basically out of the game if we take the capital, which I think we should do. Execute. No, it went rebel! Why would it go rebel? I think it went rebel. It looks like it went rebel. Say the rebel. Rebel, rebel, rebel. Right. 
<clears throat> well, if they went rebel, that should mean that the whole faction is destroyed and the, the whole family tree was in that army there. And they're just wiped out. Wait. What? No. No, 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 no. So, what you got? Lorian archers. Why would you get Lorian archers and that many of them? I don't want to fight against Lorian archers. <laughs> because basically they're just going to, to skirmish away from me. Like, really just skirmish away from me. And that's not fun. Not one bit. I'm very tempted to just auto resolve this one. Because I just fought against them. And I'm not really fancy playing this one. But I think we're going to lose so many troops. Then again, we're going to have the full strength here. And if they are indeed killed, which it looks like they are, we're not going to need this army. So let's just go for it. Yeah, there you go. Only just 900. Uh, that's not true. 1,000. But not much more than they did. And we take Kalas Galathon. Perfect. Now, what you got here? That one we can't use. Can't use that. Should be able to use all the other things though. Yeah, we should be able to. That's fantastic. And we get the Mirror of Galadriel, which give, gives a melee weapon bonus and reduces retraining cost. Fantastic. Let's start with a Shrine of Melkor cool, and retrain them. Actually, let's start by merging. Oops. Merging. There we are. Oh my god. <laughs> Can we recruit anything? Get a spy, why not? And you, <coughs> you go in there. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Actually, take those. Join the battle there. Not army there. Now this army. Now they are indeed killed and should be here somewhere. What on earth? Yeah, they are killed off. What? What? They will dis desert? What? Wait! What? Now I do not understand. You had the largest faction, the most advanced faction. What did you desert? Okay. Well, our faction is free again, so go to Torfilin. Uh, what? Okay, so what on earth happened there? Why would you ambush Canty forces? That must be what caused that, because... Isn't it a game feature that whenever you are in ambush position, as long as someone who's not allied to you comes walking across, you're going to ambush them just to give you the opportunity to declare war in a surprise way on um, on that neutral person. That must be what happened there. And because Sauron then saw us fight or attempt to fight, quote unquote, against one of his other evil factions, his, use that loosely, his evil factions, he decided that, hey, you're not playing ball, you're going to be removed from my protection, you don't deserve it, and, uh, hmm, yeah, so that happened, I was on my, almost on my good way to being very, very highly, highly in the standing as well, so I could call an invasion, and then the game decides that I should attack someone, hmm? Huh? It's really annoying. And what's even more annoying is that I'm afraid that, um, that, 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 I had a train of thought here, wait, hang on, uh, that the other evil factions are just going to start declaring war on me now. Because I'm not under the protection of Sauron. 
and I'm really, really scared of actually clicking the, ne the next turn button, end turn button. What does Dol Amroth do there? Oh, now that I can agree to. It was a fair deal. Yeah. Good day to you. Now, bribing should be removed for this this build already, so I'm not afraid of losing my armies or my cities to enemy diplomats trying to bribe me. But that because bribing has been removed does not mean that the option to attempt a bribe has been removed. And what that basically is means that <coughs> diplomats, AI diplomats in particular, will still be trying to bribe you. And you will be forced to look at that. Um, and you're still giving me missions. And you're still going to be B B B B forced to look at that small animation playing when they're trying to bribe you. Because that you can't remove you can't remove the option to bribe. But you can set the chance of successful bribery to zero. And that's what they've done. And uh, it just means that you're going to have to have to live with seeing a little bit of uh, of bribery from now and again. Now and again. Hmm. Get that. Bulk's champions are always good. We have quite a bit of a cavalry army there, actually. Looking good, looking good. And, uh, yeah, the plan now is basically just to build up a little bit. Allow our economy to stabilize. Other things. I don't know. Uh, but we are basically just swarming against Thranduil, who should hopefully lose that city and hopefully lose this one here and hopefully I'm going to take it from him and um, yeah basically just cause havoc everywhere we go we should actually very soon be done with both elves and we can focus on the third elves which are the Imladris elves to the west and we're starting to have so many places to build that I'm really not can't be bothered anymore. Why are you a normal? Go to low. Build that. Because at some point you just get so many cities that you can't micromanage them all properly. And you're just going to be like, hey, okay, you build something and don't bother me for a few turns. It looks quite good. You're not building that. Oh, I had this city. That's true. <laughs> I should probably reinforce it a little bit. Shouldn't I get those as well? Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm besieging Austin Ethel. Austin Ethel. Dude, today, hello. Anyways, uh, I think the episode has gone on for quite long enough. I think it's gone on for roughly 40 minutes, and I'm really not having the energy. I can feel that, and I can feel you being like, uh, why am I watching this? I'm just really slowly talking about things, and... Uh, just going around que queuing up things because I don't know what to do anymore and I'm not really energetic enough to just go ahead and do things. In any case, uh, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more information as to what will happen when I'm out in the archipelago and not available to record. And uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, whatever, please pop them in the comment section. I will have a read and I do love being able to uh, interact with the community and see what you say because I really do enjoy reading them and I really do read them so thank you very much for anyone who's actually written a comment and uh, yeah I'm going to see you all on Thursday I think and uh, everyone take care I hope you have enjoyed even though it may have been a little bit less energetic because I'm a little bit tired not hungover but tired so yeah have a good day and see you next time bye